Hey up everyone, welcome to the History of Football channel. Today I'll be doing another Forgotten Football Ground as part of my Forgotten Football Ground series. I've done over 30 videos so far on this topic and uh, today I'll be doing another video as part of the series. This time we're going north of the border again and it will be Boghead Park, the former home ground of Dumbarton Football Club between 1879 to 2000. Dumbarton Football Club were founded in 1872, making them the fourth oldest football club in Scotland behind Queen's Park, Kilmarnock and Stranra. Before playing at Boghead Park, Dumbarton Football Club had three previous home grounds. The first one were Broomfold Park, followed by Lomans Park. Then they played at Townend for two years before finally setting at Boghead Park in 1879. In 1890, Dumbarton Football Club were one of the inaugural members of the Scottish Football League which would later become the Scottish Premiership that we have today. In the first year of the Scottish Football League, Dumbarton Football Club finished top of the table tied with Rangers and the both were declared as joint winners of the first Scottish Football League trophy. The following year, in 1891-1892, Dumbarton Football Club claimed their second Scottish Football League trophy when they finished first in front of Celtic who come second. It were around this time as well that Dumbarton Football Club were a force in the Scottish Cup as well. They claimed their only Scottish Cup trophy in the 1882-1883 season and they also finished runners-up in the Scottish Cup five times between 1881 to 1897. Unfortunately at the turn of the century Dumbarton Football Club disbanded in 1901 and did not return to action until 1905. In 1913, the pitch at Boghead Park was turned 90 degrees. After this, the club constructed a tiny main stand, nicknamed the Postage Box, which only had a capacity of 80 seats. Not much changed at Boghead Park in the coming decades until the late 1950s, when floodlights were installed at the ground in 1957. It was around this time that the ground at record attendance was set against Wraith Rovers in the Scottish Cup which Dumbarton lost four goals to one. Also in 1957, the club bought the platform roof from Turnberry Railway Station for use as terrace cover at their ground. In 1994, the club was ordered to construct a fence in front of the toilets in the ground because local residents complained that they could see inside the toilets. The ground fell into disrepair and its capacity, which was from around 10,000 when Dumbarton played in the Premier Division in the mid-1980s, was reduced to 5,000 by 1995, and less than 3,000 by the time of the ground's closure. This was largely due to the club not maintaining the site, as they decided whether to renovate the ground or move to pastures new. Also in the 1980s, two of the stands at Boghead Park were destroyed by fire, with the club choosing not to replace them, instead leaving the site empty. Ambitious plans were created for the redevelopment of Boghead Park into an all-seated facility with a capacity in the region of 9,000 people. These plans are still on show today at the Scottish Football Museum at Hampden Park, but were never put into practice by the club. Dumbarton eventually sold Boghead Park for a housing development and moved to a new stadium elsewhere in the town. The Dumbarton Football Stadium opened in 2000. The final match to be played at Boghead Park was a 2-1 win over East Fife on the 6th of May 2000, watched by a capacity crowd of 3,031 people. Dumbarton Football Club shared Albion Rovers, Clifton Hill Stadium and Courtbridge for a few matches at the start of the following season before their new home, the Dumbarton Football Stadium, was ready to be played at. Dumbarton Football Club were not the only club to play football matches at Boghead Park. The ground was used by Greenock Martin for a single match on the 1st of January 1949. The game against St Mirren was moved from Martin's Capilow Park ground as the pitch there was unplayable. After leaving New Kilboy Park, Clyde Bank used Boghead Park as their home ground between 1996 and 1999. Boghead Park was also chosen by Robert Duval as a supposed home ground of the fictional football team Kilnocky FC for his film A Shot at Glory. Duval allegedly chose Boghead Park because of its ramshackle nature. Boghead Park also hosts a greyhound racing, 
A greyhound track was erected around the pitch at the ground in 1932, with the first meeting taking place on the 7th of October 1932. The track was independent and unlicensed, but the exact date of closure is unknown. At the time of Boghead Park's closure, it was the oldest stadium in Scotland that had been in continuous use. Looking at some records which happened at the ground, the club's biggest ever win in their history happened at Boghead Park during the Scottish Cup and it come against Kirkland Tock Central. They beat them 13 goals to 2 and that was on the 1st of September 1888. Dumbarton's biggest ever loss in the Scottish Football League also happened at Boghead Park. On the 30th of January 1926, they were beaten 11 goals to 1 by Albion Rovers. The biggest home attendance at Boghead Park was a match that I mentioned earlier in the video. It came on the 2nd of March 1957 against Wraith Rovers where 18,000 people attended that game. So that concludes my video on Dumbarton Football Club's former home ground, Boghead Park, which, which, which was their ground between 1879 to 2000. The club now play in Scottish League 2, which is the fourth division of the Scottish Footballing Pyramid, and they now play their home matches at Dumbarton Football Stadium, which is commonly known as The Rock, and it has a capacity of 2020. So I hope you enjoyed this video tonight. There wasn't too much information on Boghead Park, which I didn't expect to when I was asked to do this video by someone that follows the channel because they are a, a smaller football club in Scotland, so I wasn't expecting that much information. But I hope you enjoyed the video anyway. Let me know in the comment section below if you've been to this ground before or if uh, you remember this ground being on the telly or, in it or out like that. I've got some more videos coming out in the future. Stay tuned for those. And like I said before, if you haven't, Watched some of the other videos that I've done on the Owl Grounds as a playlist, which you can access on the main page of my uh, YouTube channel. So anyways, everyone, this has been History of Football, and I'll catch us all later in the next one. All right, tatty bye for now.